In my opinion, there are no bad ships. Yes, there are ships that don't do exactly what you might like them to do, or don't fit the role you need, but that doesn't make them bad ships. I'd like to take a look at one of the least understood ships out there, a ship that I find to be a joy to fly. Most commanders express their disbelief by spraying a mouthful of beer over the bar when I tell them how great it is. The Lacon Asp Scout, the little brother to the much-loved Asp Explorer, and that comparison is perhaps where the unfair prejudice begins. The Asp Scout is smaller than the Explorer, and this brings drawbacks. Fewer and smaller internal module spaces, fewer hardpoints, and fewer utility slots. It's just less. Lacon produces some of the finest Explorer-grade vessels that credits can buy. The smaller budget Diamondback ships and the larger more expensive Asp vessels both comprise a Scout and an Explorer variant. Let's be straight up about this. If you have the credits, the Asp Explorer is hands down the best Explorer vessel you can buy. Yes, even better than the massive Anaconda. If you're going deep in the black, accept no substitute. But this article is not about the Asp Explorer. I want to sell you on its little brother. So let's take a tour. The first surprise is the size of the ship. The Asp Scout is not a small ship. It requires a medium pad. That is not a problem. I've never come across a base that only has small pads. Most people think of the Asp Scout as being a small ship. This is a lazy assumption based on the larger, but also medium pad, Asp Explorer. From the outside, the standard lake on glass nose is a prominent feature, giving both the pilot and co-pilot an unrestricted view of their surroundings. This is a big plus when it comes to landing on planetary surfaces or navigating narrow canyons. The ship's hull is shaped like an angular pancake, with engines mounted centrally. This basic form is a holdover from the military ancestry of the ASP. The advent of modern sensor suites has long since made redundant the low detection profile it was designed to have. While it's on the pad, one can make out a pair of small hardpoints nestled close together on the ventral hull, just behind the glass nose. A pair of medium hardpoints are mounted on the dorsal hull, one on each side of the pilot's position. It's a matter of personal taste, but I prefer my ASP Scout to be coated in a smooth, matte, Black Friday colour scheme, making it difficult to see with the naked eye against the void and hinting at its special operations mission profile. Inside, we find a spacious yet functional design, typically lake on. If your ships come straight out of the dealership's forecourt, the first time you crack that airlock, you will be treated to that characteristic new ship smell. I have no idea how they can have bottled that aroma. It's unique, distinct, intoxicating. A new lake on ship. The core of the ship allows the vessel an ample Class 4 power plant, capable of delivering enough juice to power all your modules and fry the target of choice at the same time. Class 4 thrusters are standard, and some feel they're a bit of a letdown. This is where some of the negativity about the ASP Scout comes from. These drives are tuned to deliver maximum manoeuvring thrust over raw speed. As a result, the ASP Scout does not achieve the speeds that many commanders feel it should, but it can turn on a pinhead, allowing this little ship to outroll and outpitch the infamous Fer de Lance. Equipped with a Class 4 frameshift drive, it has above average jump capability, especially when engineered, though it doesn't rival the Asp or Diamond Black Explorers for a stride. You wouldn't expect it to. It's a scout ship, not an explorer. Let's just clear this up now. Explorers have a great jump range, but they need to travel light to achieve the best results. Try loading your Diamondback Explorer or Asp Explorer with a full weapons payload and watch that stride shrink. Not so with the Asp Scout. This little beauty can carry a full combat loadout and still expect to make 25 light year leaps. Once you mix in some engineering, you can push this little monster up to somewhere around 38 light years, perhaps a little more if you utilize other lightweight modules. The ship's hull mass positions it at the low end of the mass frameshift drive curve. In short, the jump range of the ship is little affected by changes in mass. Both stripped down and fully loaded ASP scouts will jump almost the same distance. So equipping a full combat loadout will only have a very small impact on jump range. Life support is a fairly stocky Class 3, nothing unusual. 
The power distributor is also a class 4, making it possible to feed power-hungry weapons and shielding. This is a light combat vessel, after all. I have to admit that I find a class 3 distributor more than capable of delivering all the power I need. The class 4 sensors and class 4 fuel tank are both standard for ships this size, and nothing to write home about. Let's take a look at the optional internals. This is not just a case of what the ship has available, but how the pilot should outfit it. The internal layout is physically very different from the Diamondback Explorer, but very similar in terms of bay specifications. A pair of Class 2 bays. These are good for sensors of various types, or a frameshift drive interdictor. A pair of Class 3 bays. Handy for cargo and SRV hangars. A single Class 4 and a single Class 5 bay. The combat pilots amongst you are going to get this wrong, so bend your ear this way. The temptation is to drop the biggest shield generator you can into the biggest slot you've got. That's the conventional wisdom. But hold up and look at the numbers for a moment. The difference between the class 4 and the class 5, A or by weave, is only 4 megajoules. So do the sensible thing and use the class 4 for the shield of your choice. That leaves the class 5 bay for your fuel scoop. The biggest issue I find with the smaller ships like the Cobra Mark III or the Diamondback Explorer, both of which are competent exploration vessels, is the scoop rate limit of the 4A fuel scoop. The ASP Scout busts through that limitation. Not only is it fast in terms of jump range, but it can also scoop like a pro, filling its fuel tank without slowing down and jumping again in seconds. At this point in the conversation at the bar, usually my fellow commanders look puzzled and ask, so it's an explorer? I have to roll my eyes and explain, no, it's a hunter. Let's, for the sake of argument, imagine the following scenario. You're an explorer in your Diamondback Explorer. You can outjump me in my ASP Scout by about 10 light years, less if carrying vehicle bays and or weapons. You also have a big fuel tank, and you can make five or so maximum distance jumps before your ship gets thirsty. As for myself, in the ASP Scout, I don't have to slow down, for my gas tank is always full. I will catch you, and when I have caught you, the ASP Scout has the extreme manoeuvrability to ensure an advantageous firing position from its standard weapons payload. For those of you with long memories, you may remember the old ASP Mark II, a military-grade vessel produced by Lacon back in 2878. Thanks to the miracle of 3D bioprinting and some memory implants, illegal in the Federation but available in the Empire if you have the right credit balance, I can actually remember flying one of these ships, a small, manoeuvrable one-man fighter, with excellent jump range but very limited weaponry, basically a military-grade laser and a single missile. It was an excellent assassin. The ASP Scout is the spiritual successor to the Mark II. Don't get me wrong, the ASP Scout is not a perfect ship. It has weaknesses. The internal fuel tanks are distributed through the hull wing structures and require a great deal of complex fuel line plumbing to feed the centrally located drives in order to maintain continuity of supply under the intense G-forces caused by the ship's extreme manoeuvring envelope. This means that when you hit the boost button, the pressure in the system makes it sound like you've just flushed the chem toilet the moment before the burn kicks in. It's just something you're going to have to get used to. The biggest issue I have with this ship is the limited number of utility slots, only two of them. Both Diamondback variants and the Asp Explorer have four, and it's the only part of the ship where I really wish Lacon had spent a little more time at the design console. Typically I mind a wake scanner and a shield booster, but sometimes switch the latter for chaff. The biggest twinge I get from the disbelieving commanders around the bar is the cost. Yes, the ASP Scout is expensive. It's 3.9 million credits for the showroom model. And you'll easily spend double that to bring your modules up to A grade. However, my fellow pilots are making mistaken comparisons against the likes of the Diamondback Scout and the Diamondback Explorer, which will set you back a mere 600,000 credits and 1.6 million credits for the showroom models. The ASP Scout is a multi-role armed ship, 
great for black operations, planetary incursions, covert recovery operations, and assassinations. As with many light combat vessels, the Aspskite will burn up under sustained firepower. It lacks the raw speed of the Cobra Mark III while carrying the same basic weapon loadout. So why not simply buy a Cobra Mark III? Everyone knows that Falcon Delisi keeps that ship at an artificially low price point to ensure market penetration. The Cobra is a very capable ship and in many ways it is close in performance to the Asp Scout, but not quite. The only advantage the Cobra Mark III has over the Asp Scout is its natural speed. In all other respects, the Asp Scout is superior and the Class V Bay gives it a true flexibility. So, if you compare the Asp Scout against the Cobra Mark III, then the Cobra is cheaper, faster, and its off the forecourt basic model carries more cargo. But that's only because the basic Asp Scout model is suboptimal in its configuration. Though the jump ranges are similar, with the Asp Scout having a slight edge, its real advantage becomes apparent when you add extra weight to the frame. Then the Cobra quickly loses its maneuverability and jump range. Comparing the Asp Scout with the Diamondback Explorer, the Diamondback Explorer has a better jump range, the result of its larger frameshift drive, but also noticeably poorer maneuverability. As standard, the Asp Scout comes with better armor and shields, although a properly equipped Diamondback Explorer can narrow the gap. The only meaningful combat advantage it can be said to have lies in its single large hardpoint, allowing heavier weapons to be utilized. However, the increased mass of larger weapons and the supporting power plant and distributor dramatically crippled the Diamondback Explorer's jump range advantage. And the ASP's significantly better maneuverability ensures a prolonged firing solution while denying the Diamondback Explorer's return fire. Finally, if we compare the ASP Scout and the Viper Mark IV, the Viper Mark IV has a justifiable reputation as a tank. These are durable ships, beloved by security forces and bounty hunters alike. But why? The ASP Scout has better armor, better shielding, massively better maneuverability, and is only marginally outperformed in a sprint, while packing the same weapon loadout and more internal options. At the end of the day, the ASP Scout outmaneuvers and outjumps much larger ships and can easily kill such targets provided that you avoid a head-to-head -head exchange of fire, boost past it and circle in neat behind. I guess it's down to piloting skill.